Joe Rogan may be a pretty, you know, mild, reasonable guy. He's fairly libertarian, but he is fairly left on a lot of issues. And so he might, you know, he'll end up coming. And then what happens is with all of his good intentions, he'll vote for someone who seems moderate, libertarian, which will be further left than the traditional Republican right. who runs in the area. And then it's just, a, it's a slow process it, where it, it, the path to hell is paved with good intentions. Yeah, like Didn't a, someone compare him to Rush Limbaugh today? Yes. Yeah. Who Washington, was Washington Post said oh that Joe Rogan is the next Rush Limbaugh. There, uh, it was making <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? It's Do you want to talk about I it? I can see it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> both ball. Sometimes. So check, it, check, it, check, check us out. Okay, so we, we, we do have the story from the Washington Post. It says Rush Limbaugh is ailing, and so is conservative talk radio industry. It's from Paul Farhi. Ah, this guy. This, uh, oh, no. we, we, we know Paul. And uh, in, 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 in this, he actually brings up this one point about... Uh, basically, the article is saying that... Talk radio is, is on the decline, and that means conservatives are, are in trouble. But he says one very important thing. The shift makes someone like comedian Joe Rogan, a libertarian with a hugely popular podcast, quote, the next Rush Limbaugh, says Paul Matsko, the author of The Radio Right, how a band of broadcasters took on the federal government and built the modern conservative movement. Well, okay, so Farhi isn't himself saying that Joe Rogan is the next Rush Limbaugh, but that is a heck of a statement to be made. I would, I mean, like in terms of impact, maybe. I mean, Rush Limbaugh has been a force on the right and conservative But Joe Rogan's radio. not a force on the right? No, Joe Rogan's not a force on the right, but he is a force. True. But, you know, I guess in the idea of influence in talk shows, but... Larry I mean, King the, had an influence in talk shows. Yeah, it's a yeah, wild but, stretch. I mean, he could have said Howard Stern. He could have said Larry right. King. Yeah, he no, could have no, said no, people listen people. to Rogan like a spiritual guide, kind yeah. of like how Rush Limbaugh was. The, yes, the problem exactly. is Rogan doesn't puppeteer the talking points. He doesn't go along with the agenda. He actually questions things and yeah. tries to rationalize them instead of just pushing up propaganda. That's, and that's why he's such a battering so, ram. That's for what, yeah, exactly. That's why it's so dangerous is because you get someone who inspires you to question the yeah. narrative and question things as they are questioning authority who wants but who in authority wants that rush limbaugh is a conservative with conservative opinions and when he tells stories and he talks he's talking it's not for, for the most part but my, you my, but you did explain to me as off the show that there's no such thing as the left and right anymore it is oh the, absolutely. yeah it is the it yeah, is the relative. woke cult it's and the then, cult and, and, the then, not then, cult. and then the not cult so right. right now we're looking at the example of joe rogan's part of the not cult but right. he has an, his own cult like following if you yeah, want to want to make that that uh, comparison and then but he's challenging everything within that woke cult for the most part right so yeah so i, I guess in that in that in that in that stance you're probably right isn't that the weirdest thing that yeah. left and right has nothing to do with i don't even i don't even you know look we, we were talking earlier you you know i said there's no real left and right anymore you mm -hmm. agreed you said it's a horseshoe and i said it's a jackson pollock painting it's just yeah. i don't know who's what who's where so i can come out and be like all of my you know, policy positions have been traditional liberal, but I think the Democrats are manipulative and they're lying to people and the media is lying too. And that's a right wing position, apparently. So uh, I guess that I think we'll know. be all like by 2069. Nice. We'll be all uh, a like a homogenized like, you know, we talk about the mixing bowl. That's when we'll all be homogenized. Everybody literally t it has a position uh, takes every single position on everything like Hillary Clinton. What, what, what do you mean? Like she takes a position on everything. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, there are a lot of things where I'm like, I don't know. You know, uh, Keystone Pipeline is a good example. The left says it's causing oil spills and it's like, OK. And then the right says freight delivery causes more oil spills. So Keystone actually is an improvement there. Uh, we mentioned this on the show the other day. There's this meme about the U.S. government spent uh, millions of dollars developing a pen that can be used in zero gravity so they can write while they're in outer space. The Russians used a pencil. And then and everyone laughs. laughs. And the, these leftists share the meme saying it was such a simple solution and America wastes all this money. And then the, the new meme now is someone writing a correction saying using a pencil can get particulate matter from the pencil into the air, which can be dangerous for the filtration system and what you are breathing. And so because they need a purified environment, it is dangerous to use a pencil. So the U.S. created a pressurized pen to use in outer space for safety purposes. It makes a ton of sense. When you don't understand and you think you're smarter, the simple solution sounds like it's right. Mm -hmm. When in reality, it wasn't. It makes me keep thinking about this, where when a new person goes from California to Texas, they want to impose what they think is right. And often what you think is right isn't. So that's when, like, 
when you, when, pe when you want to push your beliefs, whatever they are, you got to like look at history and look at the patterns and think of yourself as part of a pattern. I just think of myself as a dumbass. <laughs> like, You're not a dumbass, Luke. <laughs> because again, you have to understand there's a lot of stuff we don't know about. And, and a lot of people think that they know everything. We don't. Um, well, so we are we can learn about it. Saying, let's, yeah, let's, let's talk about the, the subtle erosion when it comes to politics. Uh, with Joe Rogan being the example of like the new right. If we're talking about the left being the cult and the right being the not cult, then yeah, I guess as strange as it might sound, Joe Rogan may very well be the next Rush Limbaugh. The only difference is Joe is talking to people. He's, he's not for the most part uh, getting up there and for hours talking about how he feels right. about what's going on. So there, there is a difference. But in terms of policy changes, it's going to affect this country. You know, so, so we're out here in the middle of nowhere. I've gone to a few gun shops and I was talking to this one guy and he was saying, oh, we got all these liberals moving in now, you know, because since COVID and the riots and now they're coming to buy guns. And I'm like, Ugh. and I laughed and I'm like, I'm one of them. And then he gave, he gave me this look. He was just like, oh, and I'm like, here's my, you know, former ID from this, you know, very blue place. And I was like, no, don't look at me, man. I'm not voting. And I was like, because I don't know. I, I lived in this place and it got bad. And now I'm coming new, new, to a new place. I'll defer to you guys. And then he was like, no, just vote for, you know, the people we tell you to vote for. And I was like, I'll just leave it to you. I'm not going to get involved. But here's what happens. Joe's a good dude. He's got a lot of good ideas and he's fairly rational, right? But he'll come in and, and I mean this with, with, with the utmost respect, I don't think his intention's going to be, I'm going to turn this place deep blue and make it as bad as California because he fully understands why California is bad. So he's, pro he's, pr he's probably soured on a lot of the policies of California that are deep blue. However, there are probably some things where he's like, look, I like that Texas does a lot of these things, but there are some things I think should change. Legalize weed. That's the slow erosion. There's issues pertaining to family. There's issues pertaining to, you know, marijuana, for instance, that can lead to bigger changes down the road. And as, as, as an individual person, you might not realize the correlation between one policy and the next. So you might think it's no big deal that I'm saying we should allow or not allow this one particular thing, not realizing it is just one domino being knocked over, which eventually ripples down the line. So let's say you, you know, want, think marijuana should be legalized. You vote for it. Now, all of a sudden, you get a bunch of dispensaries popping up and a bunch of industries from California and Colorado, blue areas, move in and set up massive businesses and relocate their employees, sending in more deep blue voters. There's things like that. It's not it's not so cut and dry. Yeah, I mean, you just got to get Republicans to start smoking weed and you got no problem. <laughs> right? They'll become yeah. libertarians overnight. <laughs> yeah. Psilocybin. Yeah. I'm into it. You know, you just got to you just got to like slowly push that on them. Just be like, it's OK. <laughs> like, you can cut, I laugh and joke, but like. If everyone took a dose of psilocybin, I think this world would be like drastically altered for the better. Yeah. I don't know about world for the peace, better, man. Communication, or they could freak no, out and ha and have a total like that will probably happen. Uh, again, is, uh, when you're talking about psilocybin, your own personal decision. Some people have yeah. really great, amazing, eye-opening uh, experiences, like Bill Hicks. Some people freak the hell out and have horrible experiences and because their self-control is trying to limit their kind of expansion, and they're fighting each other, and that fighting is hurt. It creates listen, a lot listen, of conflict. Listen, 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 this, this idea that, 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 that listen, they're already insane. They're already out sure, of control and crazy. Listen, so like, yeah, that, that's know. oversimplifying war. That's, that's oversimplifying war. We don't have war because someone's just crazy. There are reasons behind why they declare war, and typically it's over resources. True, you could have Always like the resources. berserkers. Were, the history was they would take like crazy but, but, psychoactives and then go into battle. But the point, the point, I'm, right. so you can have a society that's on psychoactives and violence. So you're but, right but, about right, that. Right, right. But the point I'm saying is. You said there would be world peace if people did psilocybin. Well, communication is what really brings it. And I, well, that no, helped I'll, me I'll tell you, learn communication skills. You could, you could take a world leader and, I and have them take shrooms, and they're still going to say, but my country needs oil. Maybe. And maybe not, though. I don't know, man. You see outside the box on that stuff. So you think that a country that's heavily sanctioned, like Iran, for instance, and their people are starving and their currency is hyperinflating, that the Ayatollah takes shrooms and also is going to be like, let my people die. He'd probably be like, well, oil is feeding my people, so I can't stop right now because they'll die. But as opposed to maybe the butt wasn't there before. At least I think I think, you know, it's like saying a father would sacrifice his kids if he took shrooms. I just don't see it. Sacrifice them. Why? Let them die. Like a, a leader of their people in their country are not going to abandon them simply because they had a trip. 
You know yeah, what I mean? No, but those are two kind of extremes, and you really kind of have to experience it to understand what kind of happens to you. There's a lot of possibilities in this kind of larger spectrum, uh, but there have been a lot of scientific studies, especially with microdosing, showing that it does actually help your mental cognitive functions increase and help cure a lot of PTSD and a lot of other internalized kind of d depression linked issues sure. that, that couldn't be solved with other issues, but uh, uh, mushrooms specifically did in particular studies. So, but the, the issue I see is if you've got a nation and they're being besieged by another nation repeatedly and their people are being killed, doing shrooms won't change that fact that they're being threatened and attacked and they will respond in kind. It won't they're, change the, the fact, right, that, that there is a siege. They won't like lift the siege, but it will change the way you view and your tactics. So, so let me ask you, if, if I was throwing rocks at your face, would you stop me? Yeah. If you took shrooms... And then the next day I threw rocks at your face. Would you stop me? Mm -hmm. So what, how come there's no peace? There's external factors in war that's not related to what you do with your shrooms. Someone taking psychedelics is not going to change war. Well, I would stop you in different ways. I would, I think, depending, on, depending on the situation. I just you, don't. You'd build a wall. I might grab <laughs> it and stand you, you, up. You, you, you know, I might throw it back at you. You'd get it back to cash it. it uh, or, you know, you'd build a wall with the rocks that you're throwing in the wall. I have a simple statement a that, I, that I saw today in, in a meme. So it's now my philosophy that I live by. And it says, uh, do no harm, take no ish. And I think, you know, yin and yang, I think, I think if people have reasonable approaches like that, I think they could go about things, especially if they have op if they have their minds opened up to new perspectives, it could go along in a way that could be a lot more productive and conducive than doing it just the old fashioned way. And when you look at psychedelic mushrooms, they usually help people realize those other possibilities. But again, not a medical doctor, not recommending it to you. I know a lot of people that had really bad trips and had psychosis and dealt with some really negative impacts. So if you're, if you are going to do something do your own homework do your own research talk to some professionals uh, especially on this topic because it is a very important one that you need to take seriously and not just decide from a youtuber right, right, that right. i'm gonna take a bunch uh, of mushrooms so now. so, so <laughs> let's follow up on the on the initial uh, conversation you know I, I see a lot of people moving to texas and i'm just like why you know i've had people say to me like you should move to texas and i was like no nah, i'm not gonna move to texas. austin yeah, everybody's moving to Austin. It didn't Elon Musk go there? Yep, he's yeah, right outside yeah. Austin. Elon and Joe and and who else went there? Is Chappelle down there? Or is he just too? Uh, I think no, no Chappelle's in Ohio. Yeah, Ben but Shapiro Alex left Jones. California. He went to too. Nashville. Nashville, California. But yeah, like, he left California. But a lot of people are going to Texas. Yeah, a lot Alex of smaller Jones. YouTubers, but still like prominent personalities, are in Texas. It's warm. That's nice. But will Texas? Dry. Is it? Do, do you guys really think this will make Texas turn blue? Do you think, Suraj? Oh, uh, I don't know if it will. I think. I've always thought it would it would turn blue within like the next ten years, not this election. Um, but look, just by pure voting numbers, if you looked at how Hillary Clinton lost to Donald Trump, I think he lo she lost by like eight hundred thousand votes. Uh, Beto O'Rourke in the twenty eighteen midterm lost to Ted Cruz by like two hundred thousand votes. And then I think around in in this twenty twenty election, I think it was somewhere around a ballpark of a hundred to one hundred fifty thousand. Um, but it wasn't the it wasn't the shift that I thought it was going to be that it was going to be even much closer than that. But it's, you know, anything is possible. There's probably gonna, Texas is probably going to do something that's going to alienate all the libs and they're going to and they're going to leave well, like so they did in Georgia. The, the, huge state, think, so. think about this, yeah. though. I mean, the Republican Party today is very different from where it was four years ago and four years before that. It's yeah. being pulled to the left. So mm -hmm. for all we know, the Democrats of this year will be Republicans in 2022. And then Texas will stay red and everyone will be like, oh, look, it's red. But it's actually right. pretty far, far left. Yeah. I mean, the thing is about. Uh, yeah. And that's the thing about how progressives view the Democratic Party in general and that they are very much the party. They're very much like the Republican Party of like the George W. Bush years. Yeah. To me, that, it's uh, also really going to de depend on the immigration, mm -hmm. especially the immigration that Joe Biden is letting in. And that's going to have a huge, tremendous effect that, of course, will support a lot of Democrats and also what's happening on the campuses. I mean, we have to understand there's a new kind of youth coming out directly from universities and they're inspired they're uh individuals that are taught a certain way of thinking that is becoming prevalent that is supported by the corporations that is supported by hollywood that is supported by silicon valley that is kind of eroding any form of oh, the old kind of fashion way of living i just realized why it's so important to stand up and speak your mind and be honest it's not to change your minds it's the kids <laughs> yeah. it's the young 14 and 13 the, the impressionable people that are forming their belief of what the world is it's affecting them like Massively. Well, that's why it's important to build culture. 
That's why it's important to do fun things that inspire young people. And one of the problems, I guess, with like talk radio is it's for people who are already in the know. It's yeah. not. But then you get YouTube shows where 13 year olds log on. That's why it's awesome. No, it's they not. Because they can watch they and it's funny. But they, and you for the most beanie. part, don't watch political commentary. They don't. But this show's different, you know? They're no. on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, they're on, they're <laughs> on TikTok. They're on TikTok. Yeah. Now, uh, surprisingly, I have a bunch of videos on TikTok I didn't put there. And, you know, I apparently you get like millions of views. Epic. Yeah. Look, I am a nobody. I mean, I. I uh, but I have young people reach out to me all the time, which is crazy, thinking that I'm like some sort of like influence in their life. And that means a lot. Because well, like, they say you I, are, you are. Yeah, no. It's, and and I, I mean, you start to think about like what kind of impact you actually are having on certain mm -hmm. people. And it's tremendous. Yeah. The Chinese kind of implications here when it comes to TikTok and also our campuses and university is also something that I think is really prevalent that we should be talking about. Because according to Campus Reform, they just released an article according to their source who allegedly works in ICE. It was that Joe Biden, our president, just recently quietly ended a Trump policy where universities had to publicly release their ties to the Chinese government and to specifically the Chinese Confucius institutions. Mm. And now, under this alleged new directive, according to campus reform, they no longer have to do that. It's and opening you, the door for Chinese propaganda. Yes. And when you look at the influence that the Chinese government has been expanding all over the world, and particularly in our institutions, it really makes you wonder, especially when you see the result of, of a, quote, university education on the young children that are coming out and their behavior in the world, which is, I would say, somewhat fairly, uh, you know, not to be too hyperbolic, but, but essentially destructive to our way of life. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and if you want exclusive members-only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.